Hey guys, you've been asking for a shop tour, so we're gonna go grab Conus and give you guys a quick rundown of the shop. Let's check it out. Dun, 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 dun. Hey Mike, we need a tour. What's that? Show us the shop. The shop. All right. This is the shop. <laughs> and we're done. Cut. <laughs> and we're good. Well, so, we started, before we were here, we started in a Mike's garage, basically, in Cameron's pole barn that was, what, 1,200 square feet? Uh, it was 600 when we first started, and then we knocked it out to 12. Right, right, right. It was, it was a very small room when we first started <laughs> mm -hmm. to expand to the whole pole barn, mm -hmm. basically. Then we added on once, and then we added on again. Yeah. I think we have bathrooms here that were bigger than <laughs> yes. the original <laughs> shop. Right. Um, and I think the turning point was when we said we, we were working in the shop with two C&Cs in the shop. Mm -hmm. which was very, that caused us to be very angry, never work directly <laughs> in the room where CNC's are operating. And I think that's when we kind of made the decision to, to move. So we moved to this behemoth, probably too soon. It was probably a little bigger than we needed, but we were hoping the growth would come and we'd fill it out as we matured. Uh, so anyways, the process is basically, this is our rough cut lumber. Um, we get a lot of lumber. We go through a lot of lumber. Um, it's pretty amazing, actually. All the exotics are on the far wall, if you can see. So this is rough cut, basically comes up through a bandsaw and is processed that way. You can, it's hard to tell the grain, but we're getting better at it. As we get more experience, as our woodworkers get more experienced, they can tell even from a rough cut piece of wood what the grain's gonna look like. Our domestics are down because we get so much of them. Look at this beautiful curly maple. This is a nice piece of ambrosia. We'll use stuff like this that's more heavily figured. We'll use for stock pieces because it's not what the customer would expect. If they see it on our site and it looks like this, but in a finished state, we don't want to send them something that looks like this because it doesn't meet their expectations. But what we love about our system is that we can actually do in stock pieces where it is, you, what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. And we'll do something with this piece that'll be a gorgeous stock piece. Maybe it'll be a Valhalla screen that's live edge on top or something. All right, this is our much used chop saw. I think this is one of the tools that actually came through from the old shop with us. I don't believe we've purchased a new one since. Yeah, I think it's a piece. Is that correct? I yeah. think so, yeah. So, <laughs> the old DeWalt. It's a, it's a demon. It just cuts the rough cut down to typically 24 inch pieces. Wood goes from there to the planer. We have two industrial planers with carbide teeth that Ooh. are badass. Um, if you have the ways and means to do so, carbide is the way to go. Yeah. Um, but there's like like 300 teeth on each. Yeah, I, can say. I don't know if you can see it in this one. Oh, maybe it's, it's up. <clears throat> yeah, you can see it right there. Yeah. That makes good footage, <laughs> shot in the <laughs> shadows. Um, but planers basically make sure that the board is flat on the top and on the bottom. So it's multiple passes and it rips the rough cut off and makes sure that it's flat on one side, flip it over and ensure that it's flat on the other. Turn a little bit, cut it, turn it, cut it, turn it, cut it, and get it to exactly the right width that you Right, want. right. Yep, it goes from there over to the jointer. Now that we have it at the right width, and we know that it's at the right depth and it's flat on two sides, we need to deal with the edges. The joint is the first step in that process. This also has carbide teeth. Very mm. similar to the other, the planers, but this will put a good edge. It'll give you one good edge. Mm -hmm. And that's basically the starting point. You take that one good edge, come over to the cabinet saws. We have two of them. These things are insanely dangerous, um, but we do a good job of not being dangerous here, which is vitally important. <laughs> Basically, we, we have two saws here and we use one primarily for ripping, which means cutting through longer lengths of wood. So this wood would be cut down at this length and pushed through. There are different blades on the two saws that we use, one for ripping, one for cross cuts. Is one for getting rips? It is. So by using the saw, you, you get really huge? Notice, this is after hours, by the way. It's the only time we could film this. Uh, we have some department heads working on their particular departments. But other than that, we are officially closed. Nobody's doing any serious, dangerous work as of right now. Hmm. Just to make that perfectly clear. This is the crosscut sled. 
and a crosscut saw. It's generally a finer tooth blade. Uh, end grain's a little tougher to cut. Ripping is not so. So sleds make it much safer, a lot less hand close to the blade. And it allows us to get the most accurate cut possible. We have a lot of sleds for a lot of different products that are preset, so we make sure that our tolerances are the same as we go through every process. So you don't put your hands yeah, on this do part. <laughs> don't stick your hands on the sharp part. Got it. Um, we have two separate sanding areas. This one is for exotic. This this sanding area basically will ha will you can sand anything that you want to here. Uh, we have a lot of woods that are uh, a lot of people have allergies to them or uh, that up. or they're sensitizers, which means that if you sand a board of padauk, that will create an allergy in you and kind of open it up that you didn't have before. And if you sand Zeracote or Wenge after that, you'll actually be more allergic to them after you've dealt with padauk for a while. So it's very crazy. So we've actually had to set up two separate stations. We have downdraft tables. They're sanding cubbies. They're arranged by production units basically to, to ensure that we get the production that we need every day and that people aren't standing too long. It's kind of a production oriented environment. So if somebody clears their cuddy, cubby, cuddy, if they clear their cubby, they can actually move on to a different part of the job. So, which most people do, which is nice. Uh, this is the magnet station. We go through a ton of magnets. Um, probably pure number, the biggest thing that we order. How, Mike, how many magnets do we order a month? Ooh, we probably go through 15,000. 15,000. So we, we do a lot of magneting here. Um, works pretty well. It's a small station. It only requires two people at its most busy point, but it happens almost every day. This is part of processing, basically. Processing is a, a larger department. It includes the magneting station, but it also includes drilling, preparing those holes for the magnets, um, cutting out the organic edges like this. And a Valhalla screen that's done on a small bandsaw. Hmm. Magnets are already placed. And then the routed edge is also part of the processing department, which would happen over on the routing table over there. It's a smaller machine, so it looks a little less threatening than some of the others, but I have a reasonable respect for all of the machines in this, but this is the one that kind of just gets me a little bit because you hold a piece of wood up to it, keeping your hands away, but it's so damn powerful. It just, it'll jump on you every once in a while. So you don't stick your fingers don't stick your finger in it. In the sharp part. Yes. Uh, this is the finishing area, which I'm very proud of. I think we do a really amazing job on our finishes. I think it's what competitive advantage that sets us apart from from other companies. And it's part of the thing that I brought to the company from my art bracket. So I'm particularly proud of this. Uh, we do a lot of different stains and finishes. Thomas. Yeah. Thomas is the department head of finishing. What are you working on? Uh, I'm working on uh, finding a finish I called up with, came up with called Wild Magic. And Ooh. it's more or less dark reds and blues uh, blended together to make a very chaotic effect. So. Um, stepping into organizing finishing, I haven't had much of a chance to get too creative because you want to work on your apartment and not in it. And so now I'm just kind of relaxing by doing something like this. Then after it gets stained or tinted, it moves into our spray booth, which we're also very proud of. It's a big square at the building. And it still smells of lacquer in here. It does. It smells delightful. It does. But it's heavy duty. Catalyzed lacquer is one of the best finishes we could offer as it really protects. It gives a really nice glossy finish. It's light protective and moisture protective. This is the QA department. QA is quality assurance, but it's actually a lot more than that. It's kind of our final assembly area as well, um, where they put the finishing touches on everything, felt, linings, um, feet if it needs it, rubber feet on the bottom. Turnstiles for token trays. It, it's there's a lot that is encompassed here. They also cut all of the plexiglass for all of the products here. Um, we have three lasers that do a lot of the dirty work, and they run most of the time. Ooh, ooh, shit. Oh, no. Why'd you epoxy it? 
because Jake said that it would be a cool idea and he had all these fun colors here. <laughs> Therein lies the CNC room. I'm not going to walk in there. I don't have hearing protection on or a respirator, but that's kind of where a lot of the production occurs. And we have machines running almost 24 hours a day. Cool. So I'll let you go in there and take some footage and then I'll meet you back out here. Cheers. Let's go. Yeah, so then once, it, once the product's made it through all the other departments, it arrives in shipping. Um, shipping's pretty straightforward. We try and ship out stuff as soon as it hits the shipping department. We ship generally about 900 to 1100 products a month at the moment. Um, there's some shelves of product waiting on other products. So customers that have purchased a dragon tree sheath and a rolling tray, dragon sheath might be done, but the rolling tray is two days behind. So it'll arrive in pre-shipping and you'll get that that notification that email via the scry system. That means it's over on one of those shelves and as soon as the other item comes, they'll both ship together. This is where clearly the most boring operations in the building occur. The offices, mm -hmm. uh, production lead offices, Lindsay, creative director offices, customer service offices behind look, me. Look at these board games. Yeah. Thanks for checking out the tour. We're really, really proud of this place and what it's become. Our staff is amazing, as you can tell. There's five or six of them working after hours right now, which is insane. Um, hats off to them. Thank you, guys. Uh, keep an eye out for the Kickstarter. It's coming really soon. Uh, probably by the time you watch this, it'll be ready to go. Uh, so keep an eye to your email for that. Check out the page because we got some cool videos of what's coming up. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Two words, sloppy joes. Eat them at the gaming table every chance you get. In fact, bring a can of spam as well for good measure, and maybe a package of onion rolls. <laughs>